Mr. Bugliosi, call your next witness, please. Dr. Charles Petty. If you would, please. Doctor, if you'd come forward. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in the proceedings before this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Take a seat in the witness stand, please. Right around there. Thank you, Doctor. May the court please... Uh, the defense asked the court permission to have uh, our expert, Dr. Brady, uh, enter the courtroom and, uh, and be present during Dr. Petty's testimony. No objection, Your Honor. Oh, fine. Thank you. Dr. Petty, were you one of nine forensic pathologists from around the country chosen by the House Select Committee on Assassinations in 1977 to serve on the autopsy panel reinvestigating the assassination of President Kennedy? I was. And what was the conclusion your panel came to as to how many bullets struck the president, their point of entry, and the path they took through the president's body? Uh, my conclusion and the conclusion of the panel was that the president was struck by two bullets, uh, one entering the right upper back and exiting in the front of the neck, uh, the other entering the right back of the head and exiting in the uh, what we call the right frontal area, that is, the front and side of the head. Is there any doubt in your mind, doctor, whatsoever, that both bullets that struck the president came from the rear and no bullets struck him from the front? Uh, none whatsoever. Would you explain, to the best of your knowledge, to the jury, what happened once the bullet entered the president's head? The bullet began to break up into small fragments, broke the skull up into fragments, and blasted out uh, through the right frontal part of the head. Exhibit 102. What's that? Uh, this is a diagram of the skull showing the point of entrance in the back of the president's head and the exit in the right frontal area. Doctors, I'm sure you're well aware one of the principal contention of the critics is that President Kennedy's head snap to the rear around frames 315 to 320 on the Zapruder film means in the eyes of the critics, some of them, that he must have been struck by a bullet from the front. You're aware of that contention? Yes, I am. What conclusion did your panel come to with respect to this head snap to the rear? The head snap to the rear in the view of the panel was that this was an automatic, involuntary reaction on the part of the president's nerves and muscles. There was a blast inside the head, the nerves were fired off, and the muscles were set into action. The muscles in the back are stronger than the muscles in the front, and so therefore the head moved backward. Let me ask you this, Dr. Petty. Assuming the president ha had been struck by a bullet from the front, make that assumption, could the transference of momentum from that bullet have thrown the president backward, as is shown in frames 315 to 320 of the Zapruder film? No, sir, not in my opinion. And why is that? No, because the head is too heavy, uh, there is too much, much too much muscular resistance uh, to movement. So the killings that people see on television uh, and in the movies, uh, which is the only type of killings most people ever see, where the person struck by the bullet very frequently, visibly and dramatically is propelled backward by the force of the bullets. That's not what actually happens in life when a bullet hits a human being. No, of course not. Dr. Petty, did you also seek to ascertain how many bullets struck Governor Connolly, their point of entry and the path they followed once they entered his body? Yes. And your panel arrived at a conclusion? That is correct. Did you tell the jury what conclusion your panel reached with respect to Governor Connolly? The panel concluded that the governor was struck in the back, uh, that the bullet uh, circled around the outside of the chest, exited beneath the right nipple, went on to continue through his wrist, and then on into his thigh, the right wrist, the left thigh. Doctor, there has been testimony that Governor Connolly may have reacted up to just over a second after President, President Kennedy reacted. Would that preclude Governor Connolly and President Kennedy being struck by the same bullet? No, not at all. Why not? Because people react differently uh, to different bullets. Uh, the bullets may wound people in different areas, and even in the same area, different individuals react in different ways. They may not even know that they've been struck by a bullet. Did your pathology panel conclude that the bullet that entered the president's upper right back and exited the front of his throat was the same bullet that went on and struck Governor Connolly on his back near his right armpit? Yes, the panel came to that conclusion. Exhibit 130. Doctor, now on the screen to your left is the bullet purportedly removed from Governor Connolly's stretcher. Did your panel examine this bullet? Yes. You saw the actual bullet? 
Yes. Could this bullet have ended up in this relatively pristine condition if it had entered the president's back, exited his throat, then entered Governor Connolly's back near his right armpit, and taken the path through Governor Connolly's body you have just described? Yes, of Would course. you explain to the jury how you arrive at this conclusion? Uh, this bullet is a full metal jacket military bullet designed to pass through the soft tissues of an individual, exactly as it did in President Kennedy's instance. Uh, it then contacted bone only in two areas. First, the rib in Connolly, and second, uh, the, the wrist bone in Connolly. In neither instance did it penetrate uh, the rib or the wrist bone. Uh, it easily travels through such soft tissues as that without great deformity. Okay, thank you, Doctor. No further questions. Mr. Spence. Now, there are some serious problems with this autopsy, aren't there, Doctor? There are some problems with the autopsy, so yes, So let's sir. be honest with this lady, the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and let's tell them. Let's just tell them what the problem was. Did you ever see the brain? No. Do you think it's important for a doctor before he gives his opinion to see the brain, to determine where the course of the bullet was? It would be nice if the brain were available. Now, please, doctor, let's not be silly. Let's not do that. You're a professional. You're under oath. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury if it isn't essential for you to see the brain. No, it's not essential to see the brain. You didn't see the brain in this case? No, I did not. Do you know where it is? No, I do not. Did you look for it? Well, not really. Did, is, as a matter of fact, well now please, doctor, you smile. But as a matter of fact, didn't your committee uh, ask some 20 different people where the brain of the president was? We asked, but we did not look for it. You couldn't find it, could you? No. Nobody came up with it, did they? No. Ask the FBI where the brain of the president was? I don't recall whether the FBI was asked, asked the or CIA not. Ask the CIA to produce the brain of the president? I don't know whether the CIA was asked or not, to tell you the well, truth. Well, you wanted to find the brain, didn't you? We thought it would be nice to find it. It's not essential, however. Well, if, if it isn't essential, what would you rely on? The photographs and the x-rays. All right. Now, doctor, let's start from the beginning. Nice and easy and quiet and nice. Do you agree that ordinarily a deceased is autopsied by the medical authorities where the deceased died? That is correct. And in this case, the proper authority to autopsy the president would have been the authorities in Dallas. Isn't that true? Yes. And you knew that there was a serious struggle about that, that the president's body was simply taken from Dallas against the authority of the Dallas people and taken to the Bethesda Hospital, don't you? Yes, I've heard that. And uh, you know that there wasn't any uh, forensic pathologist at the Bethesda Hospital where he was examined, don't you? That is correct. As a matter of fact, there wasn't a board-certified forensic pathologist that undertook the autopsy of the president. Isn't that true? Yes, I would agree that. And um, is it important that autopsies be performed by somebody who has experience? Yes, of course. Would it be correct that a pathological opinion in a case can be no better than the evidence and the materials provided the pathologist. That is correct. That is why I have gone on the x-rays and the photographs. Didn't you report and didn't your committee report that the photographs that you saw of the president's brain didn't match the, didn't match the um, x-rays? Didn't you report that as a part of your report? Not to my recollection. You don't remember that? Now, this is a quotation from your panel. It certainly, referring to the pictures of the brain, did not demonstrate, it certainly did not demonstrate the degree of laceration, fragmentation, or contusion. Where are you reading from? That would be expected in this location 
if the bullet wound of entrance were as described... Where are you reading the, from? ...were as described in the autopsy report. I am reading from volume 7 of the House uh, report of this doctor. What you, page? What page? Page 129. It's certain... I'll read it again now without counsel's interruption, if I might. It certainly did not demonstrate the degree of what laceration... What paragraph? So I can follow you, Mr. Spence, instead of taking things please, out. That, that's the typical thing to do. What paragraph? It's on page... Uh, volume 7, page 129. I'll even give it to counsel so he can see it. It's in yellow. Here you go, counsel. Thank you. As a matter of fact, let you and I read it together. I'll just no, you go, you, go, you go ahead, Bob. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Dip, dip, dip. I'll tell you what, you read the first word and I'll read the second. I'll no, tell you no. What I'll it certainly does not, dem not. Doctor, please listen to me. Are you aware of what's going on here, please? I'm about to ask you a question. It certainly does not demonstrate the degree of laceration, fragmentation, or contusion as appears subsequent on the superior aspect of the brain that would be expected in this location if the bullet wound of entrance were as described in the autopsy report. The majority of the panel okay. members agrees that examination of the brain itself even now would substantiate the opinion that he was shot from behind. Isn't that correct, sir? Excuse me. Just he's, a minute. He's just, you... now skipped, he's just now skipped three... Uh, he just now skipped 17 have, lines. Please Judge. mark that as an exit. It's nice to see both of you sitting side by side. <laughs> <clears throat> Warms the cockles of my heart. Yeah, Mr. I, <laughs> Thank you. There is hope for us, Judge. Thank you. <clears throat> Can we mark this as an exhibit? Please do. Exhibit A1. May I offer it into evidence, Your Honor? You may. Just hand may. it to the clerk. Hand it to the clerk, please. Thank you. And may I now show it to the jury, please, so there'll be no question that I've told them the truth. Well, you can show it to the jury. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir. But proceed with your now. Did you did your did your panel make that finding, Doctor? Yes. The and question... so and so, what that says is that considering the area of you uh, of the, uh, uh, where you believe this bullet entered that the brain, that is the pictures of the brain, didn't show the kinds of lacerations or contusions that you would expect. Isn't that what that says? No, sir. Well, let's it let says, the jury see if that isn't what it says. It says that the brain did not show the lacerations and contusions as would have been expected had the bullet entered where the autopsy surgeon said it entered. Yes. Now, relative to this bullet, this bullet that went, you say, through seven layers of flesh, which critics have called the magic bullet, and which I'm going to refer to as the magic bullet. Magic bullet because people don't believe a bullet can do that without <coughs> deformation. I'm going to ask you if you ever in your entire life have seen and documented a wound to a human being made by a fully jacketed military bullet fired from a Manlicker Carcano rifle, other than this case. No. May I see Exhibit 132, please? Exhibit 132 is a picture of the magic bullet. The bullets on each side are similar bullets fired into wadding, cotton wadding. Next exhibit, please. Exhibit 108, have you ever seen that before? I don't recognize it as such, That's no. part of the exhibit that was in your study, doctor. Let's look at 107 and see if you recognize that. This is a cadaver's wrist, doctor. Do you see that? Yes. Now let's look at 108. That's what the bullet looks like that went through that cadaver's wrist. The same Carcano, man liquor, rifle bullet. You know that, don't you, doctor? You saw that. That was part of your studies. Isn't that true? Um, this could very well have struck the bone in a wrist and been deformed in that way. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Thank you, Dr. Uh, was Dr. Fink one of the three pathologists that performed the autopsy on President Kennedy? He was there at the time and helped to uh, examine the president. Is he a hopeless, utter incompetent doctor? Of course not. Did you imply to this gentleman here that maybe he wasn't incompetent, that don't he should have been there? Me, don't I'm not going to hit you, cowboy. Please. Just a minute. Did Just you imply to him, by your total utter silence, that Dr. Fink, or whatever his name is, was an incompetent? Not at all. Well, then he tell was... the jury what you think of Dr. Fink. Dr. Fink is and was and may still be the uh, most qualified man in wound ballistics in the Army and has studied many uh, high-velocity rifle wounds. Don't keep secrets, okay? What about Dr. Hume? Was he competent? Of course. Did you imply to this man here that he was not? No, he merely I answered his question. What about Dr. Boswell? I don't know Dr. Boswell. But you heard of him. Well, no, oh, please, yes. No, please cut. Let him answer. Yeah, I just want to say something, Judge. Even though oh. he's, he's counsel's witness, I'd appreciate it if he wouldn't yell at the man. He's a gentleman. Okay, thank you, Doctor. No further questions. Doctor, you've been a very patient witness. We appreciate you. you coming. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. excused. <laughs>